mierda! ¡Bonita! I rate Michaela Mayer a lot as well as a fight. I'd love to have that fight. I think it's a great fight, and again, it's an option. Like it can happen. I don't know her plans, but I would love to share the ring with her as well. And you know, even if we don't fight for belts, I don't think it matters. I think even without a belt, it's still a great fight. And as much as everyone is chasing the belts, that you can still have very good fights without a belt. Clearly, Chantel was not motivated by belts when she made the decision to leave Matchroom for Queensbury, as there are no belt holders. There are no champions at 140, 147 at Queensbury. There was one, there still is one at Matchroom, Sandy Ryan. Though, like I've been saying, if it were really about getting a Sandy Ryan fight, Chantel never would have left. It's a fight that Sandy wants, but Chantel, I don't think she wanted it that bad. Not if she ended up leaving Matchroom for Queensbury, further complicating the situation. She is, however, entertaining a Michaela Mayer fight. Michaela Mayer, coming off that dubious loss to Natasha Jonas, is still one of the somebodies at these weights. Michaela Mayer, who caught wind of Chantel's comments and said, consider it done. So Chantel Cameron is going to be making her Queensbury Promotions debut this weekend opposite the ring seasoned veteran of France, El Hamme Khaled. And I talked about that fight already. At minimum, I have Chantel winning a points decision. But I would be impressed if Chantel can stop her, as El Hamme Khaled has been in the ring with Delphine Persoon. She's been in the ring with Alicia Baumgartner. Punchers, strong punchers, strong ones. And they couldn't knock her out. So I would be impressed if Chantel stopped El Ham where those aforementioned fighters could not. I have Chantel winning this weekend. It's beyond that fight where things get murky. Can she get Michaela Mayer in the ring? Well, Chantel is with Frank Warren. She's with Queensbury. And Queensbury has a good working relationship with Top Rank. So the network relationship already exists that could see the fight happening. And I don't think Top Rank would have any aversion at all loaning out Michaela Mayer to Queensbury when they've spent enough time loaning her out to Boxer, to Sky Sports. I mean, Michaela's basically been fighting abroad for the last two years. She hasn't fought on American soil since before the Alicia Baumgartner fight. She's already been fighting in the UK her last couple of fights, so I don't think Top Rank would have a problem with her fighting under the Queensbury Promotions banner. You don't think they would try to bring that fight to America? No. Why not? I don't think they're invested. I don't think they're that invested with Michaela since she dropped that decision to Alicia Baumgartner that if they were, they would have brought the Natasha Jonas fight to America, or at least the Natasha Jonas rematch. I don't really think they're that invested or invested enough that they would bring this fight to America, this fight with Chantel, if they were to try to make it. But if they did, it would sooner happen in the United Kingdom than the United States. If it does happen, Chantel wants it. Michaela seems receptive, but that's not Michaela Mayer's only option, and I guess that's the problem. What? Michaela Mayer made some mention of revisiting a Natasha Jonas rematch, that behind the scenes, they've been working on that. So Michaela seems to still be working on a Jonas fight, and if that doesn't work out, she has the option of fighting Chantel. But what are Chantel's options if things don't work out with Michaela? What does she do? It's not like their fight would be for a belt. It's not. And I'm not completely sure how much money Queensbury would kick out to do that fight. It's what makes Chantel's migration from Matchroom over to Queensbury curious, confusing. 
Who is it that you went over there to fight? This weekend's fight is for a WBC interim title at 140 pounds. Theoretically, it lines up Chantel Cameron for the winner of Taylor versus Serrano. So maybe what the plan is, is to use that WBC interim status to force a fight with either Katie Taylor or Amanda Serrano, whoever wins the rematch. It's not foolproof though, it's not. Say Amanda Serrano wins the rematch and they wanna do a trilogy. There may be more money in a trilogy with Katie Taylor than there would be fighting Chantel. In a situation like that, Amanda might drop the WBC at 140 the same way she already dropped it at 126. There are a lot of ways that you can look at this, but the gist of it is going to Queensbury. I don't get it. They might have got you a stay busy fight with Elham Mechaled, but Matchroom could have made a fight with Elham Mechaled. You went to Queensbury to fight Elham Mechaled? If Amanda wins the rematch with Katie, there's no guarantee that you get her being at Queensbury. And if Katie wins the rematch, well, she's still gonna be the A-side to you, and you're still gonna have to go to Matchroom. So you can see why I don't fully understand what the virtue is. What was the virtue of leaving Matchroom for Queensbury? What's the benefit? It only seems to further complicate things unnecessarily. In any event, Chantel's gonna be in action this weekend. I think she's gonna beat Elham Mekaled. It's just a question of how. Does she win a decision or does she stop her? We'll find out tomorrow. In men's lightweight news, to the surprise of no one, Shakur Stevenson will not be signing with Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Oscar De La Hoya said, great fighter, but not for me. I believe that when somebody says they're not fighting for the public, I cannot promote them. Shakur has since insisted he's mad because he found out I'm not signing with him. It's okay, you'll get over it. Two things can be true at the same time. Two things, three things, four, however many more. That Shakur isn't signing to Golden Boy Promotions and that's why Oscar is saying what he's saying? I can believe that. I do. But there was also a grain of truth in what Oscar De La Hoya said. That Shakur Stevenson, he doesn't fight for the audience. He doesn't fight for the public. He's of the mindset that a win is a win. Gee, I wonder where he got that idea. With Andre Ward providing counsel, it's a real mystery that there is a grain of truth in what Oscar De La Hoya said, even if Oscar isn't the most genuine person. I didn't expect Shakur to sign a golden boy just for a William Zapata fight. You're gonna make a long-term commitment to them to fight him when you're the champion and he's the challenger? No. That doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, you're not helping your situation by telling yourself that a win is a win. Your last two fights badly hurt your stock and whether or not people want to even see you. Shakur seems to have taken a stance to where unless you're a boxer yourself and a very accomplished one, more than he is, he's not gonna take no criticism from you. He will not accept it. Though whether or not he wants to is besides the point because you're assuming that the people in the audience who paid to be there or the people at home who paid to watch are aspiring boxers themselves and they're not. They don't need to be boxers to criticize you. Same way you don't need to be a filmmaker to know that a movie was bad or a restaurateur to know that the food wasn't good. That the food was bad. So somewhere in between the Mayweather era and now, people got it in their heads that you're tuning into a boxing match for any reason other than you wanna be entertained. You want something entertaining to watch. You're not tuning in because you're an aspiring boxer yourself or you aspire to be a boxing expert. Somewhere back there, in the Mayweather era and where we are now, some people got it in their heads that you're supposed to like how Shakur fights. You're supposed to be entertained. And if you're not, it's because you're a casual. That's what people used to say whenever somebody called Floyd boring. Whenever someone said he's a boring fighter, that was the retort. Their modus operandi to defend him against such accusations, which has carried over into this era, this generation of boxes. Because there are some people that would have you believe if you find Shakur Stevenson boring, it's because you're a casual. That's how they defend him. And that seems to be the stance he's taken himself when the people in attendance, the ones who paid to be there, they don't presume to be experts. That's not why they're there. And the people watching at home, they don't presume to be experts either. They just want to see an entertaining fight. And if you don't entertain them, it's not because they're coming up short. It's not their fault. It's yours. The people watching are not aspiring boxers or aspiring to be boxers 
boxing experts. They just want to be entertained. So well and good to have these conversations about boxing and boxing trivia. But whether or not a fight is actually entertaining is not a triviality. It matters and it matters a lot. It's the difference between being a draw and not being a draw. A sought after fighter or a member of the Who Needs You Club. So when an Oscar De La Hoya is so comfortable publicly guiding his fighter away from a fight with you. It's a duck. It's still a duck. But it's a duck that he can afford because you're not in the public's good graces anyway. A good portion of the paying public says they don't want to see you fight because you're boring. It's a duck. I think it's a duck. I don't think Shakur being boring, and I do think he's boring, is a good enough excuse for William to swerve him. I don't, but there are a lot of people out there that won't bat an eyelash and won't lose a wink of sleep if they never see Shakur box again, because he's boring. They think he's boring. You're missing the point. So is he. Sports, all organized sports at the very base of it, it's entertainment, entertainment for the customer, the people that pay to be there or watch it at home. It's all centered around entertainment and entertainment value. And if you're not providing that, people are gonna let you know. A promoter like Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya, he's gonna feel that much more emboldened by it comfortable having his fighter swerve you because he tells himself who needs you people don't want to watch you they don't like you anyway and that doesn't make it right it's less than ideal but things are seldom ever ideal in the sport of boxing the way you fix it is you put on performances that leave an impression that does involve taking risks so that you get the pay in public on your side once the pay in public is on your side you won't have to go looking for opponents They'll come looking for you because of what you're worth. Like they do with Canelo? You think all these guys that want to fight Canelo want to fight him for any reason other than what he's worth? Like they do with Anthony Joshua? All these guys that like to call him out, you think they're calling him out for any reason other than what he's worth? Then you're delusional. This is still the entertainment business, and I don't think Shakur is doing himself any favors by telling himself that a win is a win, or that unless you're an expert on the subject or a boxer yourself, a very accomplished one, he doesn't need to hear what you've got to say. You better listen to what people have to say because you're hoping they pay to see you. They can always pay to see somebody else. Well, you're sat around thinking that you're God's gift to the sport. They can always turn around and watch somebody else. Somebody that isn't boring. Food for thought. Shakur Stevenson's free agency has captured headlines for the last one or two weeks now as he hints at a return to top rank after complimenting Bob Arum. Shakur Stevenson complimented his former promoter Bob Arum today on social media, making some believe that he's going to return to top rank after briefly testing the free agent market. Seeing what's out there. Stevenson liked that Arum kept it real about his last performance against Artem Hadatunian, which was impossible for him to look at against. Matchroom promoter Eddie Hearn had shown interest in inking the unbeaten WBC lightweight champion Stevenson after his victory over Artem Hadatunian on July July 6. Hearn has since gone quiet about Shakur after promoter Oscar De La Hoya of Golden Boy commented on social media that his fighter, William Zapata, won't be told who to fight after the WBC ordered negotiations to begin between him and Stevenson for a match. And he's a great promoter. He's great at what he does, but he's not a miracle worker. Without the opponents to provide Shakur with, how is he going to promote him? What is he going to promote? Zapata was the guy that Hearn wanted for Stevenson if he signed him. Without him, Hearn only has lightweight Andy Cruz and a handful of lightweight welterweights that Shakur would have no interest in fighting, such as Liam Paro, Jack Catterall, and Subriel Matias. Hearn has got to know that if he signs with Matchroom, he doesn't have anyone to match Shakur with, and he could soon be a disgruntled employee airing his unhappiness on social media just like he did with Top Rank. Unhappy that he's not about to get the fights that he thought he would get. Matchroom was the only real option Shakur had as a free agent, unless he wanted to sign with the PBC and potentially struggle to get fight dates, and never mind the $3 million a fight he's been getting, I don't think he would have got that guarantee at the PBC. At least if Shakur stayed with Top Rank, his fights would be seen on ESPN by millions of fans, and their matchmakers, which are 
the best in the sport, would keep him unbeaten for years, as they did with Terrence Crawford, making him look like gold when he may not have been in reality. Who wrote this article? A kid who goes by the name Robbie Bannatine. Oh, you think it's Top Rank's matchmaking that made Terrence Crawford look good? Well, Top Rank didn't have nothing to do with the Spence fight. Why'd he look so good in that fight? Hell, he looked better against Spence than he did with Mean Machine. Than Gamboa. He actually had an easier time beating Errol Spence Jr. than he had beating them. What do you got to say about that, Robbie? It's not straight too far from the point. He's a free agent, but I'm tight with James Prince and the rest of the group around Shakur. After he tests free agency, if he wants to come to top rank, we'd be delighted to re-sign him. I like the kid a lot. Said promoter Bob Arum to Hassan Walio on X, talking about wanting to bring Shakur Stevenson back among the fold at top rank after he tests free agency and the market. You will notice that Bob Arum never trashed Shakur. In fact, they offered him another deal to keep making the kind of money he's been making over the next five fights. And yet there are content creators out there who are trying to make it top rank's fault, Bob Arum's fault, that people had adverse reactions to Shakur's last two fights. It's not Bob's fault that people are calling Shakur boring. I can't stress that enough. And Bob himself never actually took a shot at Shakur Stevenson. Hell, he tried to re-sign him. Top rank is powerful enough to work a deal for Shakur and Javante Tank Davis so long as the Baltimore native and PBC are willing to make that fight. It would be a massive dual platform fight involving ESPN pay-per-view and Prime Video. It's too bad Shakur is friends with Keyshawn Davis because he would have been an option for him as well. He's a free agent now. It's no different than a football player. He finished his contract. He's a free agent and he tests the market. That's what Shakur is doing. Hopefully, he tests the market. He'll come back to us. Is that possible? After all this hullabaloo about Shakur Stevenson's free agency and where he might go, is it possible that he goes back to top rank? And I think it's possible, at least in part, because of what he was making at top rank. He was making an estimated $3 million per fight. Now, obviously, he doesn't want to go backwards on the money. He wants that or more. And if he can't get that or more, then he might go back to top rank. We know he's not signing the Golden Boy. He said that himself. His best bet to get at that kind of money would then have to be Matchroom, but Matchroom doesn't have the bodies. They don't have the opponents for Shakur. And on that premise, they may not want to sign him. And Bob wasn't lying when he said he's tight with Jay Prince. He is. They've been doing business with each other for years. All the way back to the days of Floyd Mayweather. Before he became Money May. And who is Shakur's Stevenson's handler, James Prince. I don't want to make any bold proclamations about what Shakur is about to do, but if the question is, is it possible that he goes back to top rank? Yeah, I think it's possible. Dennis Berenchik is over there. Vasil Lomachenko is over there. Those negotiations between him and Javante Davis are rumored to be falling apart based on what Javante wants for the fight. If they do, maybe top rank makes Stevenson versus Loma. Maybe. The bottom line is, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that Shakur Stevenson, after trying things out, might go back to top rank. That could happen. 